Well, it has turned into an absolutely picture-perfect weather night for baseball in downtown Cincinnati. And a big walk-up crowd all day today rolling into Great American Ballpark and hoping it'll be a long night as well. A long night of celebrating a National League Central Division Championship. A win tonight by the Reds guarantees that for the first time since 1995. And hi again, everybody, alongside the Cowboy. Jeff Brantley, I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome, as always, to Reds Baseball. Cowboy, you have been in this position in the clubhouse, getting ready to take the field, knowing you have a chance to make franchise history. I would imagine the butterflies are floating around. Well, they're the, they're the best kind of butterflies, Tom. I mean, any time that you have a chance to, to pull off a championship and to do something that no other team here has done in 10 years, uh, it, it's got to be a great feeling for these guys. It's something that they've waited for a long time. Uh, I'm sure everybody was hoping that they would do it before now, mm -hmm. but what better place to do it than home? And what better way to do it than to win? They could have done it last night. St. Louis won its game. But now a chance to bring matters into your home fans and win it right here at Great American Ballpark. When we come back, the man on the mound who's hoping to end the night with a victory, a Central Division Championship victory, is Edinson Volquez. We'll talk about him when we return. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Cincinnati Reds and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Our telecast of Reds baseball tonight on Fox Sports Ohio and every night is presented in beautiful high definition television courtesy of our friends at H.H. H. Gregg. Well, after a mostly cloudy day and a rainy Monday, what a beautiful night for baseball. What about the rest of the night? Let's check in with our buddy Tim Hedrick. One night a year, I find it most important to wear the old rally cap. That's tonight. They're going to clinch. First pitch, 59. By 9 o'clock, 56. Down to 54 by the end of the ball game. Holy cow. Enjoy the ball game, everybody. They clinch tonight. Well, you heard it from the man himself and the guy they're going to have to beat one of the hottest pitchers in all the baseball cowboy over the last three months. That's Wandy Rodriguez. You know, it's amazing time. You look at Rodriguez and you look at his last 10 starts, eight and two with a just a minuscule amount over a two ERA, 2.07. But against the Reds and against this guy, things don't always go that way. Volquez over his last couple of times out has pitched outstanding, especially the last time out. Eight innings pitched, really throwing the ball well. And when you talk about throwing the ball well against this club, the Houston Astros, 4-0 with a .98 earned run average career, 27 punch outs in 27 and two-thirds innings. It's going to be a good one. All righty. Is this a night we celebrate in the great city of Cincinnati? First pitch right around the bend. Tonight's game on Fox Sports Ohio is brought to you in part by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Ford F Series trucks, the best selling trucks, 33 straight years. By Just for Men, for mustache and beard, keep your edge. And by Skyline Chili, whenever you're feeling good and hungry, it's Skyline time. Well, the Reds have taken the field and hoping tonight they can officially clinch a National League Central Division title. Their opponent standing in the way of making that happen, the Houston Astros. In third place in the National League Central, eight games under 500. Their Cincinnati Bell starting lineup. Jason Bourgeois in center, Jeff Kepinger at second, Hunter Pence is in right. Big Carlos Lee has done major damage in his career against the Reds. He'll back clean up. Chris Johnson at third, and Brett Wallace at first. The latter third of Angel Sanchez, Jason Castro, and left-hander Wandy Rodriguez. On the mound for the Reds, right now pitching better than anybody in the rotation is Edinson Volquez. The big key, Tom, is the fact that he has settled down with the fastball and what's that uh, what that has allowed him to do is it allowed him to make his secondary pitches even that much better the curveball and the changeup have come to be strikeout pitches for him 
His fastball is staying in the zone anywhere from 92 to 97. You get somebody on base, he elevates. All right, here we go. Bourgeois to lead things off. Playing in his 64th game since being brought up from the minor leagues, a 234 hitter. He looks at a fastball, strike one, says our home plate umpire Dan Iasonia. And this game is underway. Scott Berry at first, Jerry Meals at second, and the crew chief is Tim McClellan down at third base. Breaking ball is in there, strike two. And don't think for a minute that Volquez is intimidated at all about this being a big game tonight. Struck him out on three pitches to start tonight. The Reds defensively behind Edinson Volquez presented by Ford. Gomes, Stubbs, Bruce left center right. Roland and Vado on the corner infield spots. Orlando Cabrera and Brandon Phillips up the middle with a battery of Edinson Volquez and Ramon Hernandez. Change up right on the outside corner had him fishing. I'm telling you Volquez loves the limelight. So much has been made as Jeff Keppinger the one time red looks at the first ball out of the strike zone thrown by Volquez tonight. Of it being almost a done deal if you will as this one's in the air and foul ground and it's on its way out of play. That Bronson Arroyo and Johnny Cueto would be going in the first two games of a postseason series. But when you look at pure stuff, there is very little denying that Edinson Volquez has the best stuff. And that's not a slight on anybody else. The best stuff of any potential starter the Reds could run out there in the postseason. And you almost wonder, with another strong outing tonight, does he move his way up in the pecking order I don't, according to Dusty Baker I don't, and Walt Jockety. I don't think there's any doubt about it. In the air left field playable for Gomes two out. Edinson Volquez has the type of physical talent and mental talent especially when the games are on the line to go out and put you up the best possible start on this staff. He is a prototypical number one. Just because he had Tommy John surgery does not take that away from him. That comes from the stomach and it comes from the heart. So now Hunter Pence closing out the best season of his very young major league career. 25 home runs, 91 batted in. No longer overshadowed, huh? No, no. Through a 96 mile per hour fastball right by him. It's a ball and a strike. The thing too, Tom about Volquez is he understands the art of pitching the off speed the in and out when to change speeds when to throw the breaking ball. Broken bat one hopper to Votto Volquez tardy and they did not get him. A slight hesitation by Edinson and Pence hustling all the way for an infield hit. Any ball hit to the right side you have to move right then and Volquez you could see the pause just for a moment and because the fact that the ball was hit so softly and Volquez being late getting there you end up with a guy at first base. So the inning continues now for Carlos Lee and even though he got off to a terrible start to this year. He's come on strong here in the second half up to 87 runs batted in. Two and zero on Carlos Lee. The thing that you've got to do, Tom, is any ball that's hit, whether it's to the second baseman, 
or to the first baseman as a pitcher, you got to be moving to the right side. And, it, and if you do that, you don't make that mistake. Volquez challenging Lee with a 2 0 fastball clocked at 95 miles per hour, and Lee is slightly tardy, two balls and a strike. Well, you can't do much better than that against a big fella, but you also don't want to make mental mistakes allowing this guy to come to the plate with anybody on. This guy can hurt you at any time. I don't care if he's 0 for 50 against you. Hunter Pence very much a threat to run has 18 stolen bases, so only two steals away from becoming a 2020 player in Houston this year. 20 or more steals, 20 or more home runs in the same year. Don't think Carlos Lee agreed with the home plate umpire. Strike two. Well, Lee may not have agreed with that pitch, but the first two pitches crossed the outside corner. They were just a bit down. And Volquez made that adjustment quite rapidly. Two and two on Carlos Lee. One on, two out. Fouled out of play on another fastball. And Volquez throwing very hard early on here tonight. And you see how far Lee had to go out just to get to that baseball. Once you establish that you can throw a strike on the outside corner, you make those big guys have to reach out there to get it. Now he is. Opened up not only another pitch like this, you see that pitch is outside there, but the ball is running back to the plate, and that's what Lee has to guard against. Threw him a breaking ball, and it's in the air to Drew Stubbs. It's a scoreless opening inning for the Astros. Stubbs will lead things off when the Reds come to bat, trying to jump on Wandy Rodriguez. Reds coming to bat bottom half of the first inning Dusty Baker starting lineup presented by Cincinnati Bell as Bruce Stubbs in center Orlando Cabrera at short Joey Votto batting third at first Scott Wool in a cleanup hitter Johnny Gomes in left Brandon Phillips in a six hole at second and a latter third of Jay Bruce Ramon Hernandez and Edinson Volquez against 11 and 12 left hander Wandy Rodriguez he of the ERA slightly over three and a half he's had a nice year. He really has Tom and he's going to have his work cut out for him. This is a club that struggled a little bit on the road but that excitement and that energized ball club you could see it and you could feel it when you go down into the locker room today. It's a little bit different ball club than we saw out on the road. Especially Stubbs at 251 20 home one home run 73 batted in especially with the way this guy has been swinging the bat. Of course, Stubbs began the year in the leadoff spot, was there for about three and a half weeks, and then when the Reds had seven wins against 11 losses, and ironically, they went to Houston to face these Astros, it's where the first major shakeup in the batting order took place, with Stubbs dropped down to the seventh spot, Cabrera to the leadoff spot, and Brandon Phillips into the two hole with Roland to the cleanup spot. A major overhaul. And the Reds won 23 of their next 32 games. Amazing, isn't it? Just a little bit of shift in the lineup. Out of play, three and two on Stubbs. And Dusty's done that throughout the season. It's just a little bit of movement here, a little bit of movement there. Three and two on Stubbs, and he takes a walk. 
He had the 26 stolen bases on the season, so he's aboard to begin the first inning. We look at Houston on defense, presented by Ford. Lee Bourgeois and Pence left center and right. Sanchez and Kepinger up the middle. Johnson and Wallace on the corners. And a battery of Wandy Rodriguez and Jason Castro. Now you look at that last pitch and you think to yourself, the ball was right down the heart of the plate. Well, it was down the heart of the plate, but it was low. And Dan Sonia is more of a highball umpire. He may give you a pitch that's up around the belt line, but that pitch that's down around the shins that a lot of pitchers love to have as <laughs> as Rodriguez wanted to have there, not going to get him. Orlando Cabrera, the batting average up to 262. There goes a runner pitch in the dirt and no chance to throw out stubs. Stolen base number 27. When you get a jump like this, there's not too many catchers in the league that can throw you out. And Drew Stubbs, green light all the way, as Dusty Baker says. When he picks the right time, as fast as he is, Tom, there's not too many guys in either league that can gun him down. Count of 2 and 0 on Orlando Cabrera. Now he wants time out, waiting too long on Wandy Rodriguez. And this really works well for the Reds' setup offensively because Cabrera hits the ball to the right side. Now, with no outs, you can get Stubbs to third. Pulls the bat away, showing bunt. And now 3 and 0. Well, a 3 and 0. You got to believe Cabrera takes a strike here, or does he put down a bunt? Figuring you're going to get a fastball right down the middle. Well, I, I think he may take a strike here. And if he ends up walking, then you have a situation where you've got. And that's probably what he's asking right now. He's probably asking Mark Berry, the third base coach, hey, if this is a pitch right down the middle, do you want me to bunt it and move him over to third, or do you want me to take it and let Joey hit with runners at first and second? Takes a pitch and it's ball four. So consecutive walks to begin the Reds' first inning, and here comes Joey Votto. And what we're seeing right now, Tom, and this really works to Joey's advantage. The ball down in the strike zone is not being called a strike. So for Wandy Rodriguez in his head, he's thinking he's got to lift the ball up a little bit. If he raises the ball up any at all to Votto out over the plate, we may have a three to nothing lead early. Votto at 326, 37 home runs, and 111 runs batted in. Second in the league in batting, second in home runs, third in runs driven in. And he looks at a ball. And Votto is looking for something to hammer the first strike where he likes it. Got a breaking ball, and this will be a double play. I'm not sure he was looking breaking ball there on 1 0. And all of a sudden now, it goes from 2 on and nobody out to 1 on and 2 out. Well, this ball starts in the middle of the inside corner and breaks away from him. Normally, for Joey facing Rodriguez, the breaking ball is more of a curveball type. That looked like a cut fastball, and it looked as though Joey was surprised by the pitch. Hit it right off the end of the bat. Now Scott Rowland. 288 hitter, 20 home runs, 83 batted in. Reds looking for the two out hit, something they have done all year long. And here's strike one to Roland. In so many categories, the Reds batter lead the National League in, including batting with runners in scoring position and batting with runners in scoring position and two men out. They scored 321 runs with two outs in an inning. Rodriguez ahead of Roland. 
at 0 and 2. Doesn't that amaze you, Tom? You you really have the the same kind of bunch on the field of play from last year, even though there are some additions. But last year, with two outs, this club couldn't buy a hit to get a run in. And you add a few guys with just a little bit of knowledge of how to hit with runners in scoring position, all of a sudden, everybody's doing it well. Fast ball up, check swing, and no appeal. It's one and two on roll. And you saw that note a 19 point spread in that category between the Reds and the next closest team, St. Louis. The team they're trying to officially eliminate tonight. And everybody wanted to crucify Walt Jockety when they signed or traded for this guy right here. And he's one of those guys in the locker room that it can that can explain to you how to handle the pressure with two outs, how to hit the ball, where to hit the ball, and where to expect it. Off the outside corner, that'll even the count on Roland at two balls, two strikes. Very rarely do you ever see Scott Rowland over anxious. Do you see him swinging at pitches that are 2 and 0 oh and over his head? Yeah, he'll chase a few now and then. Smart hitter. Rowland has worked at full after falling behind in this at bat. Nothing in two against Rodriguez. He has stubs at third with two away. A scoreless game in the bottom of the first inning. On the ground, backhanded by Johnson. A long throw, and it gets by the first baseman, Wallace. Rowland on his way to second. The slide there. He's safe, and the Reds lead 1-0. Tom, you said it as good as you can say it. 0 2 to 3 2. He fought off the bad pitches. He finally gets a pitch middle end that he can hit hard. He hits it right down the third baseline. And it looks as though Chris Johnson was trying to set his feet, but didn't realize how far he had to go. And Roland not only gets the ball to get himself to first base, he gets on to second. A hit, RBI, and moves on to second base. Fastball up and into Johnny Gomes. So here we are in the bottom of the first inning. On a night where the Reds are trying to clinch a National League Central and they have a 1 0 lead. Where would the Reds be in this 2010 season without the year turned in by this guy? I, I knew you were going to say that, Tom, because he has been one of those guys that up and down, yes, he has been. But the one thing that he has done throughout the season is hit with runners in scoring position, especially with two down. Tapper down to third. And this time to throw a good one by Johnson, but Roland delivers a two out single to put the Reds in front one nothing. Our game storyline brought to you by Elk and Elk serious lawyers for serious injuries call 1 800 Elk Ohio. Staying focused Cowboy on the immediate task at hand and not only staying focused on winning ball games as in clinching tonight but staying focused throughout the rest of the season we were talking about this earlier not only tonight but to clinch the, the division but to get to that second best record lined into left center field off the bat of Johnson Gomes over to cut it off and he will hold Johnson to a single nicely done by Johnny Gomes you were talking earlier Tom about how well Johnny Gomes has done at the plate not only has he done well at the plate but he's really improved himself mm -hmm. in the outfield there were so many throws earlier in the season that he would try to throw all the way through to home plate and allow the runner to go from first to second base trying to throw a runner out at home that he didn't have any any chance of getting and now he's become a much smarter 
outfielder. There's a rocket in the left field off the bat of Brett Wallace. So after falling behind 1-0, all of a sudden the Astros have the first two aboard here in the second inning. A hanging breaking ball on the first pitch. And Wallace gets a fastball here and turns it right around, right in the hole between where normally Cabrera would, would be playing, but he had moved over about two steps and he shot it right past where he normally would be at. Well, you're down to the latter third in the batting order. The number seven hitter is Angel Sanchez, a 279 batter. No home runs. He has driven in 25. And a breaking ball starts him on the outside corner of strike. Sanchez has gotten better and better as this season has gone on. Of course, that's really the story for this Astros team. I mean, if you buy into the theory and look no further than August and September of last year for the Reds, as that one's bunted to Volquez, he's got to play a third and unable to get the runner doubling him up at first. Boy, that is instinct right there by Edinson Volquez. There was no bunt play on whatsoever. The ball is bunted. Volquez comes to the ball. And you can see right away behind home plate, Hernandez pointing at third. And immediately with the point to third, Volquez spins and fires it and almost, as you said, almost got a double play. Good job with the battery there between Hernandez and Volquez. Well, the number eight hitter is a catcher, Jason Castro. Who checks in a 205, a pair of home runs, seven batted in. Runners at first and second, one out in the inning. Pitcher coming up next. Starting to talk about if you believe in what the Reds did last year, winning 27 of their final 40 games, and that being a springboard, if you will, to this 2010 year. Well, the Astros have something to look forward to in 2011. As you go back to the final week of July and over the last two months the only team that has a better record than Houston among all National League clubs is Philadelphia. The Reds have the third best record in the league since the end of July. I think a big issue for this ball club has been the fact that they have been able to finish up ball games when early in the season they were not even though it's been Brandon Lyon a veteran uh, closing ball games for them. Fulcino has pitched very well at the end so has Mark Melanson. Matt Lindstrom who was their closer early in the season has now moved to the number eight spot. And you know as well as I do Tom anytime that you can shorten a ball game and make it a six inning ball game. That's kind of what San Diego has done all year long. It's been Gregerson. It's been Adams and it's been Heath Bell. You shorten the ball game and have three guys down there that you can count on on a regular basis. You're going to help yourself. Castro hanging in there falling behind nothing at two has fouled away the last two offerings from Volquez. And what an amazing walk up crowd pardon me cowboy here today. Uh, there was only about 17,000 tickets originally on the books that have been sold for this game. And now the 0 2 to Castro and the fastball is up and away. John O'Brien the Reds ticket manager said they've had four ticket windows open all day long. They have been six deep in every line. There's a lot and of you people give here. it up to the folks. Here in Cincinnati and greater Cincinnati tonight there's a crowd in excess of 30,000 in the ballpark on this Tuesday night. It's a whole lot of walking up. And they were still about 20 to 25 deep when the first pitch was thrown in this game about 30 minutes ago. You still see people coming in all up underneath the aisles. There's a lot of people in there. Soft liner into left field a base hit they're going to wave around the runner here comes a throw by Johnny Gomes to the plate not in time and a two out single on an 0 2 pitch by Jason Castro has tied this game at one.
Looks like a backdoor breaking ball that did not have a whole lot of action to it. And for Volquez, that's really his third best pitch. And you can see his hand out to the side of the ball. And as the ball comes in, instead of the ball dropping straight down, the ball just kind of hangs in this area. And that's why the batter is able to get the flat bat to it and just slip it into left field. Cowboy, you just said it, his third best pitch. When I mean, you're talking about a guy in Castro, and you know what? He got a two out hit to drive in a run. But he's batting 205 on the year, and he's batting eighth for a reason. That's why you take your best pitch and you keep hammering him until he's out. Well, now you have a pretty good hitter here in Wandy Rodriguez. 12 hits, three runs batted in as a pair of doubles. And he's already squaring the bunt. Here comes a squeeze, and they're going to pull it off to perfection. You can't roll it out there any better than that. And Houston has taken a two to one lead. And they're able to do that because of the speed of Sanchez. All Sanchez did there was follow Roland down the line. Roland's charging, so Sanchez just follows him. As soon as the ball goes down, Sanchez comes right on to home plate. Not necessarily the perfect squeeze, but you're looking at Sanchez who was following Roland down the line. It's almost a safety squeeze, if you will. I think you're right. I think he watched Roland right in front of him, and I think he said, well, as long as he's going, I'm going. Ground ball up the middle, backhanded by Phillips, and that will end the inning. But after the Reds jumped in front in the first, Houston takes the lead in the second. Well, Reds fans, you know the drill by now. If a Reds player hits one of our Toyota Tundra signs tonight, John Harmon of Cincinnati will win the beautiful new Tundra on display at Great American Ballpark, and you still have a chance to register for your shot at winning it at an upcoming game by stopping by one of your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers. Houston 2, Reds 1, bottom of the second inning. Brandon Phillips, Jay Bruce, Ramon Hernandez to start things against Wandy Rodriguez. Rodriguez really escaped some major damage in the first inning. He walked the first two batters, but then got a big double play off the bat of Joey Votto before Scott Rowland had an infield hit to drive in the Reds' run. Phillips is usually a pretty good hitter against left handed pitching regardless of where he is in the lineup. That pitch hit him. Well, hope it didn't hit him in the same hand. But he was hit on out in San Francisco a little over a month ago that really took a bite out of a very good offensive year for Phillips. Got the back elbow. Yep. Got his right elbow on the back. Did not quite get that right hand, thank goodness. Jay Bruce's numbers have gotten better and better and better as this season has progressed against left handers. He has a batting average against the Southpaws up to 260. Chased a pitch out of the strike zone, 0 and 1. Nine of his 21 home runs. 22 of his 65 batted in have come against the lefty. That is considerable progress. The Atlanta Braves are underway. Playing game two of a series against Florida. No score in that game in the third inning. A lot of the major action in regard to the playoff picture happens later tonight. Of course, the Pirates are in St. Louis. Reds magic number at one, a Reds win or a St. Louis loss, and it's all she wrote in the Central. The Cubs will be in San Diego. The Padres are just a half game behind Atlanta in the wild card, and one game behind the Giants, who will entertain Arizona in the National League West. One and two to Jay Bruce. Yeah. 
Well, that pitch there, Tom, looked like the same pitch that he threw to Votto for the double play. It looked like he got to the side of it just a bit, trying to cut the ball away from Jay. Still hard, but kind of a cut fastball. Runner goes, swing and a miss, throw down to second base, and out at second base is Phillips. So that's a double play. Boy, Castro did a great job here, not only catching the breaking ball, but putting the throw right on the money, and he did get Brandon Phillips. When you put your glove down there and the catcher hits your glove from 90 something feet away, uh, 120, whatever it is, you're dead duck. I mean, all Sanchez had to do was catch and drop. So now two away, nobody on, and Ramon Hernandez a batter. Houston leading two to one. Strike one. Good breaking ball, the best of the night by Juan D. Rodriguez. And that puts him ahead, nothing in two. Rodriguez in his last ball game against the Reds, six walks and ten strikeouts. Both of them nearly highs. Gone swinging Hernandez and gone to the Reds in the second. 2 1, Houston in front. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, you know, uh, got the gargles ready. <laughs> um, ready to. to Wet everybody up who's going to be in here. I mean, it would have been nice to do it in San Diego and just tear that clubhouse up, but <laughs> but it's going to be nice just to do it in front of the home crowd. Hopefully that we sold out today, and hopefully that the fans come out and just show um, show us the love that we've been giving back to them. And I know it's been since '95 since since anything has happened here, and I'm really looking forward to it, man. I mean, the city deserves it, and, and so do we. Our Geico direct quote from Brandon Phillips. Hoping everybody's smiling at the end of the night tonight and soaking wet and ruining clothes. Cowboy, that very, very handsome suit that you're wearing tonight. It ain't and getting that shirt any champagne on it. Should be doused later tonight <laughs> in champagne. I don't think so. <laughs> Tell you what. A little champagne and that do your sporting right now would do you some good. I can remember in 89. Clinching when we were in Los Angeles and we clinched back backdoor style. We won because or we clinched because the Reds beat the Padres in San Diego. And we're listening to it over the radio and we're all covered in champagne and beer and everything else we could find to pour on each other's head. And you take all those clothes and you pack them in a bag. And you'll stay left in there for, you know, a good while until you get to where you're going, until you get back home. You, when that bag opens up, you're talking about some nasty smelling stuff. Woo! Found away by Kepinger, two and two, leading off the Houston third inning. Two and two to count on Kepinger. And a bouncer foul. You can chat with Hall of Fame baseball writer Hal McCoy right now. Plus, you can check out the Ohio Sports Mix exclusively on FoxSportsOhio.com, presented by 1 800 Auto and SafeAuto.com. Well, you heard from Hal McCoy in a pregame show on Reds Live with Jim Day and Jeff Pecoro. He plans on being down there tonight. And hoping to be part of the celebration is Hal McCoy. Kevinger always a tough out. A three and two count on a Houston second baseman who draws a walk to begin the inning. The 
Volquez needs to get back to being aggressive in the strike zone and not not so much trying to pinpoint this pitch or pinpoint that one. His stuff tonight is good enough. We saw him run through the lineup there in the first inning. 96 97 the only bad play that he made in the first inning was not covering first base. Hunter Pence the beneficiary of that mental momentary lapse to get an infield hit when Volquez did not get to the bag in time on the one hopper to Votto. Red scored in the first inning Houston with a pair in the second and that's where we stand here in the top of the third. Oh and two on Pence. Well, that shows you how difficult it is to stay back on a changeup when you're looking fastball. Hunter Pence not only stepped, but stepped again, and he stepped towards the third base bag trying to hit that pitch. Check swing and a miss. See you later. Like out number two in a game for Edison Volquez. He is one out in the inning. He is looking fastball from the beginning of the time that he picks out his bat over there in the dugout. Back to back change ups. This one you can really see the rollover of the fingers. And look how that bat comes through. That bat came past the plate and then he tried to pull it back. You're choked up that much and you swing that far ahead of time. You're looking eater. Now Carlos Lee who flied out to Stubbs his first time up gets a first pitch fastball up around the letters and he's down a strike. Oh and two. The curveball from Volquez is a self taught curveball. He picked it up during the offseason when he was coming back from Tommy John trying to throw something that was easy on the elbow, but it's still his third pitch, and you don't ever get beat by your third pitch. Well, that was a breaking ball, and it's hooked foul. It sounded like Lee may have cracked his bat. He's taken a long look at it. And apparently all is intact. The O2 and you can see the hand is to the side of that ball there. And when your hand is to the side you see the ball roll up there you're not going to get a consistently downward bite on the baseball. Your fingers have to roll up about a quarter turn to make the ball go down. Room another breaking ball and that one in the dirt. So the count is even on Carlos Lee at two and two with a runner at first, one out. And the Reds down a run here in the top of the third inning. And you can see here, this is where Volquez is struggling right now. He's struggling with the curveball, and it is his third best pitch. He wants to throw it more, but yet those are the pitches that are being hit out into the outfield or the balls that the Astros are being able to reach base on. Two two coming to Carlos Lee and the count is full. That was a change up there and Volquez tried to make that pitch too good and what I say what I mean by saying too good he tried to roll it over with his fingers too hard the ball was way too low by the time it got into the eyesight area of the hitter they're not going to swing at that. 
Three two on Lee the runner goes and it's in the air straight away center field hit pretty well. Stubbs back to the wall leaps and he got what a play by Drew Stubbs to take away a two run home run. Standing ovation indeed. I'll tell you folks, you're going to see a whole lot more of that from Drew Stubbs in a Reds uniform. He's just getting started. A two away in the inning now for Johnson, who singled into left center field his first time up. Kepinger at first, two out. The breaking ball is outside. That is a gold glove play. A line drive over your head, and you go back to the wall and get it like that full speed. That's big time. Much better breaking ball there, Tom. Got the ball down in the strike zone, had a little bit later bite to it, and fooled a pretty good hitter in Chris Johnson. You know, for so many years in the National League, you had the, the trio. Of Jim Edmonds in St. Louis, Steve Finley in Arizona, Andrew Jones in Atlanta. They were piling up the gold gloves year in and year out. I mean, that primarily was the trio. And of course, for a long time, you included Barry Bonds in that group because he won, what, seven gold gloves in his career. But I think there's very little doubt Jay Bruce this year deserves to win a gold glove. And as you brought up, it won't be long before Stubbs has one as well. I agree. People just don't run on Jay Bruce anymore. That's why his assist ratio is down. He threw out so many people last year and the year before, they just quit running. Good night. Reds down a run after two and a half. Well, this week it's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader beginning with the Detroit Lions and the Green Bay Packers from Lambeau. Others will see Carolina and New Orleans. And then the Redskins and the Eagles. Donovan McNabb makes his return to Philly. It all begins with the Ford Fox NFL Sunday pregame show brought to you by the all new Ford Edge Drive One at noon Eastern. Breaking ball near strike to Edinson Volquez. Reds down a run and Volquez behind 0 and 2 in the count to begin the third inning. And that didn't last long. Three pitches, and that's three consecutive strikeouts for Wandy Rodriguez. Here's a look at that play by Stubbs in the top of the inning. Get up! He almost jumped too high, caught that ball down in the heel of the glove. Yeah, when you, when you put your right hand against the wall and you start to lift up and you've got that momentum going against the wall, you'd be surprised at how high you can jump. Stubbs walked, stole the base, scored a run in the Reds opening frame. Breaking ball by Rodriguez to get ahead of Drew at one ball and two strikes. Well, he is feeding red batters those curveballs right now. And they are starting about mid thigh, and the bottom is coming out of them. The 
Cabrera to follow and Reds are hoping the inning will extend down to Joey Votto. That is four consecutive strikeouts now for Wandy Rodriguez. Reds only have one hit and that was an infield hit by Roland to knock in a run. The longtime Reds fans can take advantage of the final Tri-State Centers for Sight Senior Night Special. That's this Thursday. Reds fans 60 and older may purchase non-premium tickets at half price in advance of game day only. It's a 7-10 game with Houston. 513-381-REDS or go to Reds.com. Reds not only trying to close out the division championship tonight, but they're trying to make a run here in the final six games of the year at locking down the number two seed, if you will, in the National League playoffs. And in essence, even though they are only one game behind the Giants for the second best record, they're in essence two games back because they would lose a tiebreaker with any or all of the others, whether it be San Francisco, San Diego, or Colorado. Although Colorado would need a modern day miracle at this point to get in the playoffs. Everybody else would have to lose and they'd have to win them all. And the two teams are chasing play one another the final three games of the year. Exactly. So they're praying for Atlanta to get beat every night. And they're praying for either San Diego or San Francisco to get beat every night. Tapper, Johnson, Bobbles, and the inning will indeed continue for Joey Votto. Well, the curveball right now for Cabrera is really working well. This is a curveball here, and Cabrera just pounds it into the dirt. And the problem that Chris Johnson makes there is he does not go down with both hands. He goes down with his glove, and in the transfer, he ends up bobbling the baseball. A good third baseman, both hands go to the baseball, and you throw from where you catch it. That is a second error of the game tonight by the third baseman Johnson. On the infield hit by Roland in the first inning, he allowed Scott to go to second by throwing the ball by the first baseman Wallace. So now Votto for the tying run at first. And you almost have to wonder what goes through a pitcher and catcher's mind as they face a hitter of Votto's magnitude whether it be lefty on lefty or righty on righty you struck him you struck him out before in games that you've played you've got him in a double play the first time up but yet you know if you make a mistake the thing could end up in the river. Great location on that fastball strike one. And that's that little drop down almost cut mm -hmm. kind of fastball not the normal release point that we see from Juan de Rodriguez. Came right back with a hook and that was a beauty. See those are two different speeds one is at 89 that cuts a little bit away from Joey that one is at 74 that starts up and then breaks down in a way. Swung on and fouled out of play third base side. Bado still behind to Rodriguez and nothing in two. That was the cut fastball there, Tom. He dropped his arm angle just a little bit, and a, and a hitter like Votto will pick that up. He may have not picked it up the first time, but he will pick it up again. You can see the arm get flat. You can see the ball cut outside, and Votto's on it this time.
breaking ball down the right field line will it stay fair no it's foul. Fool me some of the time but not all the time. I went a little bit off the end of the bat not hit nearly as well as. Votto would have liked well, that ball was inside so his hips came open a little early. Struck him out on a high fastball and the inning is over. An era man left we play three in Houston leads by a run. Tonight's game on Fox Sports Ohio brought to you in part by your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers where you can register to win the Tundra at Great American Ballpark by JTM Food Group. Proudly serving the finest food service operations in the industry restaurants schools and the military JTM food group. 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on car insurance by Geico visit Geico.com and by GMC we are professional grade. One and oh to Brett Wallace. Show us the bubbly indeed. That's a game plan tonight as the Reds are trying to close things out in the National League Central. Those ladies came prepared for a little fun tonight, Cowboy. Yes, they did. Oh, you're supposed to say yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brett Wallace, Angel Sanchez. Jason Castro the 3 0 against Edinson Volquez here in the fourth inning Houston leading by a run. <laughs> Pull the string on him but barely getting a piece is Wallace. Over in the American League, the only race of any consequence, and boy, there's a mighty big difference between being the American League East champion and being the wild card in the American League playoffs. You got that right. Tampa Bay, a half game lead over the Yankees going into play tonight, and both teams lead in their games. Tampa Bay, 2 0 over Baltimore. The Yankees, 2 1 over Toronto. If you win the division you play Texas at home. If you're the wild card you go on the road and play Minnesota. Well that is a nasty changeup. When you're talking about throwing a changeup and a fastball look at where these both hands in the same exact spot as the, this is the changeup on this side changeup. Fastball, both of them releasing at the same point. Watch what the ball does as it gets to home plate. One of them has some 96 mile an hour juice, and the other one drops straight down. It's all about the middle finger and how you get it to come through the baseball. And Volquez went down to the minor leagues to perfect that because the changeup is his money pitch. When he's got the change and the fastball, going in the right direction and they're coming out of the same arm slot you're not hitting it. Fastball at 95 to get ahead 0 and 2 on Sanchez. That was a that was a change up inside that he struck out Brett Wallace on so that just tells you it's just about arm action if you think it's a fastball and it's a change up you got no chance. There was. And the other the other part of that Tom is it gives the pitcher Edinson Volquez some phenomenal confidence. Volquez is not hitting 95 96 there 97 he's pitching there tonight right. it's a big difference. A lot of guys will hit 94 95 they'll pitch at 90 91. Volquez pitching at 95 but that one is dropped into left center field on a one two pitch so again Sanchez 
Like a couple of other Houston hitters at the bottom of the order getting two strike base hits against Volquez. A changeup that almost bounced before it hit the ground. And you can see the contact right down here. I mean, we're talking dirt right there. And one hand, there's not even a second hand on the bat there. One hand comes through. Look at this hand here. One hand coming through the bat and just flipping it over the head of the shortstop, Cabrera. Number eight hitter is Jason Castro. He knocked in a run with a single to left field on a no two pitch his first time up. A left handed hitting catcher that can throw the way he does. That's why he was a 2008 first round pick by the Astros. Cardinals and the Pirates are just getting started in St. Louis. We'll keep you up to date on that one tonight. Jeff Supon on the mound for St. Louis. Check swing and a miss. One and one to Castro. If Volquez can work the inside play just a tad more than what he has done so far, that changeup is going to mean even more to him as the game goes on. You have to open your hips and get your hands to the baseball on an inside pitch. You're going to really have to quicken up. And that means you'll have no chance to do what Sanchez did, and that is just flip a changeup out into left field. Runner goes, one on and miss, throw down a second, and out is a runner at second base. It's not easy to do on an off-speed pitch, but Hernandez cut it loose. Well, we've seen it done twice tonight from both sides, and Hernandez sees the runner out of the corner of his eye. He picks the ball with one hand, comes up firing, and you got to give Cabrera some great props here. Not only does he catch the ball, but he gets that tag down there in a hurry. And by a good, quick, sweeping tag, he's able to get the runner, and it was only by the hair of your chinny chin chin. Broken bat, one hopper at Phillips. It's all over the infield, that piece of lumber of Jason Castro. Reds come to bat, trailing two to one. Well, we invite you to visit the official online shop of the Cincinnati Reds at Reds.com. Get your gear ready for the playoffs from the source. Shop the Reds.com official store tonight. All right, time to take a look at our AT&T trivia question. Who did the Reds beat to clinch the National League Central in 1995? Give you a little while to think about that. We will give you a clue. They might play the same team in the playoffs here in 2010. Scotty rolling to start things here in the Reds fourth against Wandy Rodriguez who's only allowed one hit an infield hit to that Roland which drove in a run in the first inning. Rodriguez has already fanned five batters in the game and that's over the last two innings. An easy play here for the center fielder Bourgeois one away. Well you don't lose a whole lot of speed between Bourgeois and Bourne out there in center field. Not exactly the same kind of hitters. Bourne's really perfected his swing but Bourgeois not far behind him. Well, Roland retired. Here's Johnny Gomes. He bounced out to the third baseman, ending the first inning. Well, the Pirates have jumped all over Jeff Supon. 
in the first inning and they're still batting with a three nothing lead. Supon committing a big error allowing a run to score. And then Garrett Jones hit a two run home run to straight away center field. It's the first home run Jones has hit in quite some time. One and two to Johnny. Just off the inside, cornered even the count. Of course, they've been talking in Pittsburgh about getting things turned around for a long, long time. But Cowboy, I think you'd agree they have some nice players to start building some things around there. They really do, Tom, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that they're playing much better baseball under John Russell. Things are things are structured. And with Neil Walker, they've got McCutcheon out in center field. They've got a new catcher behind home plate that is concerned about the pitchers much more than he is about his offensive statistics. And I think that that means a lot more to the pitchers because you've got to have a catcher that can call a ball game. Three and two to Johnny. And a foul ball. Uh, young uh, Alvarez at third base looks like a nice player, number one pick. And uh, Tabata, we've seen a little bit of him. Outstanding. I, I I was really surprised that Tabata was let go. I mean that. I mean in the trade that is because the guy can flat hit. And you look down in their bullpen with Evan Meeks and Hanrahan. Both of those guys could close on any given day. And that's got to make you feel good. Way two pitch. Swing and a miss, and they are piling up tonight again for Wandy Rodriguez. Cowboy mentioned he struck out 10 Reds the last time he faced him. And this is a fastball that he just runs right up underneath the hands of Gomes. And that's one of those pitches that if you swing at it, and you make contact you're probably going to pop it up if you swing at it and you don't make contact. Well that's what happened right there back to the dead guy. Two away for Brandon Phillips. I mean the Reds have been so quiet tonight so far offensively against Rodriguez. Were it not for back to back walks in that first inning. The Reds would not have scored a single run against Rodriguez in this game tonight. Fallen behind an instant bat to Brandon Phillips at 2 0. Well, this is part of September and October baseball, Tom. When you've got a guy on the mound like Rodriguez who is 8 and 2 in his last 10 starts with a 2 ERA, I mean, he's pitching his best baseball. You've got to find a way to beat the guy. And that's exactly how it's going to be when the playoffs start come around October 3rd or 4th. You've got to find a way to beat the other guy. And when you get your chance, you better jump on it. And so much of that has to do with swinging at strikes. I mean, I know that sounds so elementary, but it is so true. And there's a case right there. Rodriguez early in the game walked a couple of batters. He has hit a batter, hit Brandon Phillips his first time up. And just look at the last line that you brought up earlier that he had against the Reds. He had 10 punch outs, but he walked six batters. And that should tell you that he's not throwing a whole lot of strikes and you're chasing a whole lot of pitches out of the strike zone. Mainly the curveball. Well now Jay Bruce. He struck out his first time up. On the front end of a strike him out throw him out double play cutting down Brandon Phillips trying to steal second base. And there's what we're talking about right there. It's not picking on Jay, but that is not a strike. No. And it's not a pitch that he's going to do much damage with. And what he's looking for is a first pitch fastball. And Rodriguez knows that, so he drops down to try to throw that cutter. Well, that time the ball didn't even cut, it just stayed inside, but it was too late for Jay. He had already committed himself to a pitch that he thought was going to be near the strike zone. Go 
almost wonder if Wandy Rodriguez at times is trying to have the hitter just grow downright impatient with him. I mean, there is absolutely no how, no way. That on those throws over, we saw it with Votto his last time up with Cabrera at first base. And here with Phillips at first in this at bat, he's not, a, not trying to pick anybody off. He's not even trying to hold them close. It's so funny that you say that, Tom. It, it is all about the middle game on the mound and the middle game with the hitter. If you know a hitter is impatient, you know he really wants to swing the bat. Then you just feather him a little bit off the plate, or feather him a little bit inside. You throw the ball over to first base five until the fans start going nuts. Then you throw him a slider that starts in the middle of the plate and breaks off and watch him swing at it. It's all in the head. When you get to this level, it's all in the head. There's strike two. Two and two now to Jay Bruce and Jay having a few words. With Dan Iasagna behind the plate. Brandon Phillips carries a tying run at first base. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Struck him out on a breaking ball, and the inning is over. Seven strikeouts for Wandy Rodriguez in the last three innings. Time to take a look at the Coors Light Cold Hard Blast. In San Diego, the Reds getting the win down that right field line. That's about the only place you can get a cheapie in that ballpark. You're exactly right. And Phillips hit that baby right on the nose. And when it came off the bat, Tom, it looked like the ball was going to fade foul. But yet Phillips had hit it so squarely, the ball started to fade, and then it just kept right on carrying out. Wandy Rodriguez to lead things off here in the top of the fifth inning. Reds got a run in the first, a couple of walks, a two out infield hit to drive in a run by Scott Rowland. But then in the second inning, back to back hits. One out later, a game tying single by the number eight hitter, Jason Castro, to make it 1 1, and then a squeeze laid down by this man, Wandy Rodriguez, put his team in front 2 to 1. One and one to count. Well, he's really headed towards the numbers that he had last time. Six walks, ten strikeouts. Tonight he's got four bases on balls and seven strikeouts. you do Tom if you're Vedens and Volquez you fight you battle you stretch you claw whatever you have to do to keep your team right where they're at right now because you know your team's not hitting the ball they've only got one hit on the board so you do what you can to keep them off it. That's how you win ball games because as soon as the worm turns as soon as that momentum changes to the Reds favor. You don't ever let them have it back, and it will change. You just don't let them have it back. 2 2 on Rodriguez. And after getting ahead, had a ball and two strikes. It's now one and two. Bourgeois next, and then the second baseman, Jeff Keppinger. Edinson got a little help right there. Wandy chasing one out of the strike zone. That's five of them in the game for Volquez. Well, the Reds would like to show their fans and say thanks during Fan Appreciation Day. That's this Sunday, October the 3rd, here at Great American Ballpark. We'll be drawing for great prizes throughout the game. For tickets, call 513 381 Reds or go to Reds.com. Bourgeois for two is struck out and bounced to Brandon Phillips. Two runs, five hits, two errors, three men left on base for the Astros. 
One run one hit three men left for the Reds. And a tapper foul one ball and one strike. What Volquez needs to do right now on his fastball Tommy he needs to slow himself down a little bit. Where he can get himself into a balance point before he drives the ball to home plate. His upper body and lower body are not quite in sync. And what's ending up happening is his upper body is starting towards home plate before the legs do, and he's having to speed that arm up, and the ball is sailing to his arm side, up and into a righty. That was a better pitch there. Where did that miss? What you want to do is keep your body nice and easy almost standing tall as a tree before you let the ball go. Straight away center field Stubbs there two out. Edinson now a chance for his first perfect inning of the night. You watch the last pitch from Volquez. This is where you want to stay. You can see how closed and he stays closed all the way through until the last second and then the ball is delivered to home plate. That's what you almost have to do each and every pitch whether it's fastball change up or breaking ball. Let the grip do the work for you. See, he knows that Keppinger is a fastball hitter, so he wants to make him change, hit that changeup and fool him with the changeup. Well, Jeff is no dummy. He knows the same thing. Throw him that fastball down and away. He heard you. It's out of play. What a lot of pitchers don't understand, Tom, is they see other pitchers throw a fastball to a fastball hitter like Keppinger. And he rips them back up the middle. Well, what they don't realize is my fastball is not like yours, and yours is not like Volquez's. Volquez's is 97 miles an hour. Throw that baby up there. That's the top percent, <laughs> less than that in the big leagues. Too many people that can throw 97. Mm -hmm. One and two to count. And there's a breaking ball and he just smacks it into center field. So there's that third best pitch again. Yeah. And again the Astros make him pay for throwing it. They won't do it every time but they have a, a few times here tonight. Well his curveball is more of a curveball that you throw for one for a pitch number one. You, you throw that for one pitch. Not for an 0-2 pitch. Well, now Hunter Pence a batter. The reason that you don't throw it for a first pitch, and watch where his hand is. His hand is to the side of the baseball over here. You've got to get your fingers almost on top of the baseball to drive the ball down. You can see that little hump that comes in right there before the ball gets to the plate. If you can see it the hitter can see it. Back to back fastballs in this at bat to Pence who has an infield hit. And a struck out swinging. We well, can tell this big crowd tonight at Great American Ballpark is just ready to get excited. You but ever just... since the first inning they've had very little to get excited about not even the hint of a threat offensively. The buzz in the crowd. Well, they're ready. I mean, they're they are waiting. We talked about it. No if you were with us earlier, there weren't supposed to be uh, very many folks, not a very big crowd. But of course, when this became a clinch chance for the Reds after the Cardinals won last night, there have been better than 13, 14,000 plus tickets sold today alone. Pack the car, baby. We're going to the ballpark.
Down to Roland. He'll go the short way, and the Reds will come to bat. In the bottom of the fifth inning, down a run, and now it's time for the fifth third bank hardest workers in the game. Outside of team practice, what do you do to keep yourself in major league form? I well, run every day, uh, you know, work out, make sure I'm eating right, make sure I'm getting enough sleep. Uh, you know, so many things, and you know, probably the, the most underrated thing is is your mind, and that's just staying positive at all times. You know, there there could be days where you have one at bat as a pinch hitter, and then you might not get another one for two or three days. Right. So that can be very tough, but you you always got to stay positive. Fifth Third Bank, the things we do for dreams. AT&T trivia the answer it's all right here who did the Reds beat to clinch the National League Central in 1995 well I was there it was the Phillies and it was on September 22nd and oh what a big day that was when you clinch on the 22nd look at that kid right there that's who I'm talking about <laughs> when you clinch on the 22nd of September that means you can do all the things that you want to do to get yourself ready for the playoffs. You can set your rotation. You can set your lineup. You can rest your guys. You can do all the things that you need to do. Hey, I don't want to interrupt you. You saw who saved that game. I did. I underlined it. I underlined it. I couldn't help it. I hate blowing my horn. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, I got to tell you, though, Cowboy, and, uh, and Dusty Baker was asked about this. There is a huge media contingent of the game here tonight. I mean, Quadruple in size down in the press box of what we normally see for you know, a game in June, July, August. First pitch swinging, Ramon Hernandez pops it up. And that's an easy out to start the bottom of the fifth inning. But Dusty Baker was asked at length, you know, if you win the game tonight, and you know, then do you think about you know resting some guys here and there as you get a look at the media contingent? And he said, look, and I mean I don't know how anybody could argue. He said, look. The season ends Sunday. The earliest we would play would be Wednesday. And if not Wednesday, it would be the following Thursday. We have plenty of guys around here who could use that to get rested up. Right. So we got to start thinking about getting the number two seed in these playoffs. Right. And I'm right there with him. I mean, what a difference. You know whether you're talking about opening in Philadelphia in the first round of a division series against a team that's won back to back National League pennants or having to open on the road out west whether it be in San Francisco or San Diego as opposed to opening here making sure you open here. Well, Wadi Rodriguez is just abusing this Reds lineup here tonight. That is eight strikeouts. What we know is Atlanta has not only clinched the East, they have clinched the best record. Nobody can catch Philadelphia. They don't have enough games left in the season. Philadelphia will have home field advantage however long they are in the playoff. The second best record there for Atlanta. That means they have the second best record or the best record technically of any second place team. And that of course determines the wild card. But as we brought up earlier taking a look at Atlanta's record is irrelevant as it pertains to their number of wins. Yeah because. Doesn't matter. A wild card team cannot have in any series which it plays home the field home advantage. field advantage. So the Reds are stacking up really with the Giants in San Diego for Colorado. It's not going to happen. Diving catch made by the third baseman and the Reds are gone in order. We go to the six still 2-1 Houston. On to the sixth inning we move here on Fox Sports Ohio and those people on Twitter that are Reds fans arranged a tweet up the Reds did tonight. And they had everyone on Twitter buy up the seats here in the moon deck and they are sold out out here in the moon deck. So thank you for the tweet up. It's time now for our Meyer Texpo question of the night as Edison Volquez goes to work. We want to know should the playoffs be considered when voting for MVP. One for yes two for no text your votes to three seven six six four Sander text message rates apply we'll have the results coming up. They're uh, getting a little lively out here boys. 
Well, they're the ready least. to get lively in the red, scoring some runs to get a lead and get some electricity in his park with his big crowd tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, they've got electricity out here without the run <laughs> score. I mean, it, they are fired up out here now. That's the way we like it. <laughs> Back. Let's test these people as Volquez goes with the strikeout. Help me out, people. Get up. Come on. Get up. Get up back. Come on. They're ready for some runs. Love the power of television. Okay, back to you. You could have them do anything you want out there, Jim. I, I really could. The master of ceremony. Thank you. There's a party. I'm there. Well, City sure. hoping to celebrate tonight. I'm sure folks would love to see playoffs be considered an MVP voting, but they are not. Well, I should say this. They are not statistically considered, but there are a lot of times that because of what somebody does in the postseason, he ends up being an MVP when there's a close matchup. Well, I mean, look. You're they have human. an MVP for the season. They have an MVP for an LCS. They have an MVP for a World Series. There you go. So, but you and I both well know that some things leak over a little bit. Yeah, they can. Although you know, I guess technically they're, they're supposed not supposed to have those to. things, you know, postmarked before the playoffs begin, and they'll have a little extra time this year. The playoffs will not start. Two days at the conclusion of the regular season, which has been pretty much the MO forever since the advent of the division series. Right. Last year, the best team with the best record in the American League had the choice of how they wanted their schedule to play out in the division series. This year, that shifts over to the National League. And what that means is Philadelphia has a choice. And they already have guaranteed themselves the best record. They have a choice of whether they want to have a game, a day off in between games one and two of a series. As Johnson strikes out, and Edson Volquez now has seven of those. So, in other words, for the National League this year, the Phillies will have a choice to play game one on Wednesday with game two on Friday, or they can play Thursday and Friday. That'll be their decision. It's one of the reasons the Yankees last year, along with just beating people to death, is that one is grounded foul. Why the Yankees went through the entire postseason last year division oh. series, LCS, and World Series using only three starting pitchers. And that's what you want to guard against with Philadelphia now that they have three pitchers that are throwing the ball awfully well. A righty in Halliday, a lefty in Hamels, and another righty that came from this club, and that's Roy Oswald. Just the fact that Volquez is starting to use the ball on the inside part of the plate. Makes him more dangerous with the changeup. The last two strikeouts have come from the changeup. One and two on Wallace, and now it's in the chance to fan the side. We mentioned he's not had a perfect inning in the game tonight. He's thrown 96 pitches in the game. And Hernandez wanted that ball inside and it started there and ran away. And I would suspect that we'll probably end up with a change up here. Off the outside corner, two and two on Wallace, who has singled, scored, and struck out. to the right side and the big shift defensively cost the Reds an easy out. Well you got to wonder what kind of book they have on Brett Wallace who's played a grand total of 47 games. So 
now the inning does continue for Angel Sanchez who's reached on a fielder's choice scored a run and single to left center field his last time up and that single was on the changeup that you and I saw on the replay that he hit about one inch off the ground. Cardinals and Pirates have gone to the third inning. Pittsburgh with a three to one lead there. Reds are down two to one here. Volquez has hit the 100 pitch mark. He had been far more efficient with his pitches over his last three, four starts than he's been here tonight. Just he's only couldn't. walked one, but he's had a lot of three ball counts. Yeah, he just couldn't quite find the release point for the breaking ball and change up early. Stop and Hernandez will fire down just in case a runner took it for granted. That'll be a wild pitch. Looked like Volquez was just trying to rear back and throw that as hard as he could and held on to it just a tad too long. Actually, more than a tad, like a whole long time. Big pitch right here, Tom. It's a big run out there at second base in a one run game. Got him looking, and the inning is over. Nice, nice, nice. Volquez fans aside. All right, coming up Cabrera, Vado, Roland. Reds trying to get in front and bring this Central Division title home. Welcome back to the Coors Light six inning, and now it's time for the Coors Light freeze cam. A two run homer thought Carlos Lee denied, says Drew Stubbs. And that is the Coors Light Freeze Cam brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. I'd say it's about time for the old boys to break out. I'm with you. One hit, one run, hard of the order coming up. Let's go and make something happen. Well, here we go. Cabrera to start things. Then Vado, then Roland. Juan D. Rodriguez has walked three batters. He's hit a batter and has struck out eight. Cabrera drew a walk in the first inning, reached on an error on a tapper, slowly hit up the third base line, bobbled by Johnson. And that was in the third inning. And a rocket by Johnson this time, and a tying run aboard to begin the inning. Cabrera went up there sitting on the breaking ball, and when he got it, hammered it. Took two fastballs, one down, one right down the middle, and then he throws him the breaking ball, and the veteran says, ah, not this go round. All of a sudden, you get the immediate leadoff man aboard in an inning, and we talked about the crowd. They're just itching for something to get going, and man, you can feel the vibe running through this place immediately. With Votto coming up. Well, you look down that third baseline, Everybody in about three or four sections are standing up. Bovado oh, had a hearty cut and fouled it away. Wow. Oh, 
over anxious there and he's behind 0 and 2. Rodriguez has really had his way with Votto tonight. Got him to ground into a double play in the first inning struck him out in the third. And here we go this is what we brought up earlier and it seems to only happen against the left handed batters in the Reds lineup and there's only a couple up. There's Vado and there's Bruce. Well, I think and both times he's gotten ahead of both the hitters. He's done the same thing. I think what he's doing is setting up the catcher inside and then lobs it over to first to make them think they're coming in. Vado the go ahead run of the plate. He has Cabrera the tying run at first with nobody out here in the last of the sixth inning. And it's a base hit in the right field. Cabrera will stop at second base. Pence getting to it quickly. And now the first two aboard here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Drop down, breaking ball. And Vado saw that. He's been seeing it all night. The drop down and the cut the other way. Look where he catches this ball. Right about dirt time and just pulls it the other way. You're talking about staying on the baseball. Awfully good. That using one hand, Tom, really allows you to get that extra extension out there. Now nearly everybody in this ballpark on their feet. Roland jumps on the first pitch pulls it foul. The Reds magic number stands at one. A victory here tonight in front of a big crowd at Great American Ballpark and their Central Division champions. And about as clutch as you can get standing at home plate. Oh, and two on rolling. We have a change up there, Tom. We haven't seen that maybe once or twice the whole ball game. Had him 0-2 back in the first. He came all the way back and got a base hit. One and two to Roland. Got him on the changeup earlier. This time, not fishing. What you're going to do now if you're Wandy Rodriguez? It's either the curveball or the fastball in. You don't have a whole lot of choice. He's taking the other pitches. Two on, nobody out. Reds down a run. Two and two on rolling. Just a little deja vu from the first at bat. 0 2 to 3 2, got a base hit. 0 2 to 3 2 here. We shall see.
He'll do it again. That's a pretty gutsy pitch right there. Three and two threw him a curveball, started outside, and the thing about it for Roland is you've got to pull the trigger. You can see the knuckle curve coming out of the hand. He starts it off the plate, and as the ball comes back, you don't swing, you're struck out. Boy, it is getting loud in here. They're loaded. Louder. I'm often reminded of a conversation with Bobby Valentine the last time the Reds sniffed a chance at the postseason, the one game playoff in Riverfront Stadium in 99. Bobby Valentine, then the manager of the New York Mets, who the Reds, of course, played in that one game playoff, said, without question, Riverfront Stadium was the single loudest stadium he's ever been in in his life on that particular day. So when tickets went on sale early Monday morning after a very late Sunday night, the game was going to be late Monday afternoon, and it sold out in an hour. And even though we don't have a sellout here tonight, we've had an unbelievable walk up crowd sending the attendance well over the 30,000 plus mark tonight. And now the Reds with a chance to have not tied to take the lead. This is big time moment right here, my friend. No outs in the inning. Gomes has got to show some patience here. All right, Johnny Gomes. With the bases loaded and nobody out, the Reds down a run. Started two. Did he go? No appeal. Now they're asking for one. And now they asked. And no, says Scott Berry at first. Elias Sonia doesn't have to ask. We ran into that the other night with Hirschbeck. John Hirschbeck threw somebody out of the game because they wouldn't ask. They wanted him to. He said, uh uh. You can tell Johnny Gomes is up there squeezing the sawdust out of that bat right now. Now that's why he got a change up right there and that change up was right down the heart of the plate. When you're gripping that bat like that the man that's standing on the mound he can see it too. And he took a fastball right down the middle for a strike. So Rodriguez ahead of Johnny Gomes with the bases loaded and nobody out. Houston with a two to one lead. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. You know, bouncing the curveball right here. Fooled me. Maybe he's setting it up for this one. Most times when. Rodriguez has gotten himself into trouble. He has gone to the curveball. That pitch was a fastball up and in. And Johnny just did get a piece of it. Dribbled foul. Another changeup, Tom. How about that? We've seen more changeups here in this inning from Wandy Rodriguez than we have the whole ball game. I guess after Cabrera ripped that curveball into left field, he went away from it. Still one and two on goals. And a fastball has popped up over the screen and out of play. Gomes up there battling against Rodriguez.
Holmes has bounced to third and struck out. The inning began with a single by Cabrera, single by Vado, a walk to Rowan to load him up. And now Gomes at the minimum trying to tie this thing up, if not give the Reds a lead. Boy, he gets a base hit right here. This place is going to erupt. Ball up and in, and Gomes scratching his head up there. But it's another foul ball, and he'll hope for it and wait for a better pitch. The thing that he's doing, Tom, and this is something that Johnny changed once he got to the Reds this year. Instead of trying to pull that fastball in, he's trying to shoot it up the middle and the other way. That allows him to guard against the off speed pitch and that backdoor curveball. We've seen him have some big hits right over the second baseman's head. He jumped all over that fastball and hooks it foul. Four in a row, he pulls those elbows in and gets the fat head of the bat to the baseball. Not really any way you can keep that ball fair, but maybe he'll make Rodriguez go away from him. This will be the ninth pitch in this at bat. And that last swing, by far the best contact Gomes has had in the at bat. Good eye there to even the count of two balls and two strikes. When you eliminate the inside plate, inside part of the plate, Tom, it allows you to slow things down on the outside part of the plate. That's why Gomes has not looked like he's wailing at the ball out over the plate. It gives him a split second longer to wait. This figures to be the action pitch here. Rodriguez does not want to go to a full count. And this battle will be won by Rodriguez. One out. Went back with a fastball inside, a four seamer. And he drives it right in on the inside corner. That's a strike whether he swings or not. And Gomes just got underneath the baseball. Well, now this becomes an enormous at bat for the Reds in this inning with one out. Early in the season, you could almost say this would be virtually automatic Phillips against a left handed hitter. But after getting hit in the hand, you can't really say that anymore. He's going to have to battle here. Brandon in the game has been hit by a pitch and drawn a walk. So he clearly has seen the ball well, something you can't say for a lot of Reds hitters against Wandy Rodriguez tonight. Well, Brandon has the ability to hit the ball the other way as good as anybody. Patience and get your pitch. 1 0 on Phillips. Fouls it away to even a count of the ball and a strike. Fastball middle away there as. Rodriguez had to get a strike over the plate. Let's well, just missing it. What well, is very much has a postseason feel this inning. Everybody standing in Great American Ballpark, facing a very tough pitcher on the mound. Down a run, dig it back. And a breaking ball is low, two and one to Brandon Phillips. The thing that I love about this Tom is that the at bats are grinded out. They're not just wailing at the ball like they were earlier in the ball game. Every swing every pitch is thought out. 
pulled the string on him. And now all of a sudden, it's a two and two count on Brandon Phillips. Well, you can't have it laid out any better than the Reds have had in this sitting. Bases, Bases loaded. loaded and nobody out. And now there's one out. Two and two to Phillips. Andy Rodriguez started this inning with 75 pitches. He is now at 103. And it's amazing he has not made a mistake here with the bases loaded. He really has the Reds hitters very much fooled. These last two hitters as to whether he's throwing breaking ball, whether he's throwing the changeup you brought up, when he's throwing the fastball, where he's throwing the fastball. There aren't a lot of good swings in these at bats from Gomes or Phillips. They are grinding the at bats. But Gomes pops up. And now, what will Brandon Phillips do on a 2 2 pitch? A ground ball in the hole. This will tie the game. And safe the call at second base. It's 2 2. Some big time hustle from Scott Rowland to get from first to second base. And a tough play by the shortstop Sanchez. He just couldn't quite get it there enough for Keppinger to stretch and keep his foot on the bag. Base is still loaded. We're tied at two, and Jay Bruce, a batter, he struck out swinging twice in the game. And Jay Bruce appears to be choking up an inch or two from the bottom of the bat in this trip. I saw the same thing from Brandon Phillips. Joey Votto the go ahead run at third rolling out at second Phillips a run scoring infield hit at first base. Reds trying to capture the lead. And a one hopper. That'll be an inning ending double play. The Reds had them loaded. They get one to tie. We're off to the seventh. Tonight's game on Fox Sports Ohio brought to you in part by AT&T. Find out what's possible with the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T Rethink Possible. Buy your Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky Honda dealers. Visit MyCincinnatiHondaDealer.com. Buy Wendy's. You know when it's real. And buy Granger with over 900,000 products to help get your job done. Granger for the ones who get it done. Get a look at the National League Central Division standings. A magic number at one for the Reds, who are tied at two. St. Louis trails by a run at the end of three at Bush Stadium. Huge, huge double play from Wandy Rodriguez. Reds had the bases loaded with nobody out, and Rodriguez allows an infield hit to allow just the tying run. And that ball that Jay Bruce hit was right on the nose. It just happened to be right to Jeff Kepinger. Arthur Rhodes is on the mound. Left hander four and four on the year with a 2.38 earn run average appearance 67. Had a chance to visit with Arthur for quite a while before the game today. Asked him how he was doing physically. He said his heel is doing better but it does still hurt. But he says he is ready to go. For the final week of this season and into the playoffs, 
Sharp ground ball from Castro. But Roland picking it at third, one out. Reds fans, if you're in the rest restaurant industry, let JTM help you with great tasting products for your menu. Inspired solutions, better results, JTM. Got a pinch hitter, Anderson Hernandez, to bat for Wandy Rodriguez. Cowboys, we know the Reds would be nowhere close to clinching a Central Division title without Arthur Rose. Huh. For the first four months of the year, I don't really think anybody could put up much of an argument that there was not a better relief pitcher, period. Forget setup guy. There wasn't a closer, there wasn't a seventh inning guy, an eighth inning guy on the planet, at least in the National League, that was better than Rose. I now, think, I think over the right. last month and a half since his heel has really started to be troublesome. Well, where do you think he is right now compared to where he was early? I think as far as batter to batter, he's fine. I think if you leave him out there in a situation where he's really having to struggle, you got to get him out of the game. I don't know that he has that full tank anymore like he did early in the season. I mean, when he was all the way up to the All-Star break, I mean, he was pretty much automatic. Right now I think as long as he's pitching and there's not a soul on base or there's a runner at first base you're totally fine. I think when you're asking him to to pitch to a sixth or a seventh batter you're pushing the limit. And you're talking about a sixth or seventh batter in an outing. Yes. Not in the batting order. Right. I don't think that you can put him in the game sit him down and bring him back out. I don't I don't think that's a good thing to do. Strike three call. I think what he's doing right now is right on the money. Just like this last pitch was a fastball down and away. You don't want to swing at it. Because you're not going to hit it, and it's going to be a strike anyway. Another outstanding outing tonight for Edinson Volquez. Goes six innings, allows seven hits, two runs, struck out eight, and walked only one. And let's remember, this is coming off of an eight-inning appearance his last time out. Strike one to Bourgeois. And you really had to expect for Volquez that there was going to be some fatigue factor coming into this ball game. And yet he was still able to go out, put six innings on the board, and keep these Reds right where they needed to be, and that was in the ball game. And again, we're not talking about who's had the best year, who's had a better year, but something we talked about very early in the game. Volquez now in five starts since they sent him back out for a second rehab has an ERA of under two. So where does that put him in the pecking order? And the only as far reason as the postseason is concerned. The only reason they sent him out for the second rehab, Tom, had nothing to do with inability to pitch. It had to do with taking him out of big time pressure situations and allowing him to work on his arm slot. Popped up short center. Cabrera out to get it and Rhodes with a one two three inning. All right, Reds coming to bat, bottom of the seventh in a 2-2 game. Well, now it's time for the Granger player spotlight for the ones who get it done. Fourth consecutive quality start for Edinson Volquez. Struck out eight and walked only one. Will not get a decision in the game. But the Reds are trying to Clinch a National League Central Division title. They need a win. Don't forget Xavier basketball tickets on sale now. Their home schedule includes Butler, Wake Forest, Florida, plus many, many more. Starting at just $17 per game. 745-3411. Or buy online at GoXavier.com. All right, here we go. Bottom of the seventh inning, Ramon Hernandez, a pinch hitter. 
And then back to the top of the order, Drew Stubbs against right hander Wilton Lopez. Hernandez is struck out and popped up to short right. Lopez, five and two on the year with a 3.13 earned run average, 65 ball games. He's posted a 1.63 earned run average in his last 28 appearances. Willie Bloomquist is standing in the on deck circle. Well, you got to wonder whether or not he'll be the guy to bat. Probably all depends upon what Hernandez does during this at bat. In the air down the first base side, and that's out of play. Still nothing in two. Boy, Lopez has not thrown a strike since he's come in the ball game. No. All three of those pitches were up and above the hands. Some of these youngsters coming into the ball game in this kind of situation, you got to make them work a little bit. One and two on Ramon. Yonder Alonzo also standing down there in the Reds dugout with a bat in hand and a helmet on. Broken bat roll to second base. One away. Got to believe Alonzo will be sent up there to bat instead of Bloomquist, and that's what's going to happen. You figured if Hernandez got on Bloomquist up there to try and bunt him over, but in a tie game, they're looking for somebody who's got a chance to hammer one out of here. And you know that for the most part, that the kid coming to the plate has got a pretty good eye. And those pitches that were running in on the hands of Hernandez are going to end up being balls here. You know, you can't talk enough about the importance of guys like Alonzo and Francisco knowing the red situation as far as injuries are concerned from left handed batters they thought they'd have on their bench in the playoffs. And Alonzo swings at the very first pitch he sees. I only bring it up because you have guys like Edmonds and Lance Nixon that have been around for a while. It would take a miracle for Edmonds to be available and healthy again for the playoffs. Lance Nix has just not gotten a lot better. He's gotten a little better, but not a lot better. And if neither one of those guys are on the postseason roster, your big boppers off the bench would be two rookies from the left side, Alonzo and Francisco. Those are all the little things that Walt Jockety and Dusty Baker and everybody affiliated with the Reds that they're thinking about and probably not sleeping well at night thinking about things like that. Well talking with Lance Nix he has come leaps and bounds over the last five to seven days he's at least able to run in the air left field did Stubbs get enough. Off the wall. Just missed by about a foot, if even that. Oh. I mean, we're talking a yellow line hanger. Looked like a changeup down and away, and Stubbs reached out and hooked it down the left field line. And Tommy, that ball looked like it hit. Maybe a foot below the line. Oh. Boy, everybody in the Reds dugout were coming out unglued over there. 
But as I was telling you about Lance Nix, he's been able to run, he's been able to swing the bat. The one thing that they're trying to do is get him some at bats in, in a game situation where the game is out of hand, where he can just go up and take some pitches and see some pitches. Right now, they don't have the ability to do that. Here's Orlando Cabrera. The go ahead run is out there at second base. Two outs were in the bottom of the seventh. Four one. Coming right into your living room. Now. One and oh one Cabrera. And he doesn't chase. Guy's been around something you said a minute ago. Going to make the young man work out there on the mound. Now that's the difference between having Yonder Alonso at the plate, who is a youngster who's not used to doing this, and having a guy like Cabrera at the plate who has been around. Not that that's going to change the results, but it can. Many times it can. Popped it up, and it looked like he chased ball three. So we are on our way to the eighth inning. Astros two, Reds two. Boger and the Reds are proud to team up to offer you a great value. Check concession stands throughout the ballpark for the Kroger meal deal, which includes a full size adult hot dog, a 16 ounce Coke, and during this final homestand, delicious Orville Redenbacher popcorn, all for just $7. And don't forget baseball fans now's your chance to enter to win a Fox Sports Ohio Meyer prize pack just text the word Meyer M E I J E R to three seven six six four now to be entered we wish you good luck 2 2 game Reds on a night when they're hoping to celebrate citywide region wide a central division championship with a magic number of one they tied the game in the bottom of the six here we are in the eighth Nick Massett now on the mound has not allowed a run in any of his last five appearances. Appearance number 80. What Massett turned his season around early and quickly. He's fallen behind Kepinger at 2 0, 2 3 and 4 in the Houston batting order. Kepinger, Pence, and Lee. Kepinger is lined to left, walked, and single to center. That's the pitch that Massett has got to get back to throwing and, and hitting it right on the money, straight out of the bullpen. That good hard fastball right on the outside corner. Trying to play first base side, count even two and two on Kepinger. Even when a hitter is looking for that top down hollow of the knee right on the outside corner you know how good of a hitter that Kepinger is on a fastball and all he can do is foul it down the right field line. Three and two. Two runs seven hits five left for the Astros they've committed a couple of errors two runs just five hits. And six men left on base for the Reds. Big pitch right here from Massett. And it's on the ground to Roland. And that is out number one. So you start that pitch sequence earlier instead of waiting until you get 2 0. Oh, you're probably going to end up with a strike out there instead of a ground ball on the third base side. Kepinger is looking dead red here as this ball starts off the plate and comes back to the middle. And that's what allows him to pull the ball. But that's have, that's because Massett has to be sure that the ball gets on the plate there. First pitch fastball in there strike one to Hunter Pence who has an infield hit a struck out and bounced out into a fielder's choice on a grounder to roll it. Oh, oh, oh. That's what we call the old yellow hammer. <laughs> or the Louisiana breakdown, whichever one you want to talk about. Which do you like better? I like the Louisiana breakdown. 
That one starts up in Memphis and drops all the way down to New Orleans. <laughs> oh, and two to count on Pence. And what do you call that? I call that ugly. Two away in the inning. He was swinging no matter what right there. Why do you like Louisiana breakdown better than the Yellow Hammer? Because when I get down to New Orleans, I can visit Galatoire's and get me some good food. <laughs> oh, and two to count on Carlos Lee. And a first pitch fastball at 95 is a strike. Two two game two outs nobody on. One and one to Lee. Lee tonight is fly to center. Lined to center. That was a. What appeared to be when it left the bat a two run home run. And Drew Stubbs went leaping up over the wall to bring it back. And then Lee struck out against Volquez in the sixth inning. Well, now Master has fallen behind three and one. Very, very, very careful here, Mr. Brantley. And I think that's part of what. Massett is trying to do here with Lee. He got ahead. A couple of chase pitches he didn't chase. Just got to stay careful. Hit it the other way. Bruce coming to get it. And he got it. One, two, three from Massett in very impressive fashion. All righty. We got the big boys coming up Joey Votto, Scotty Rowland, and Johnny. 2 2 game. All right, John Morrell, hot dog play of the game. We just referred to it a moment ago. Houston at the time with a two to one lead. It looked like it was going to four to one. But Drew Stubbs brought it back on the drive to center by Carlos Lee. We're tied at two. Reds come to bat here in the bottom of the eighth inning. They have the heart of the order coming up. Votto, Roland, and Gomes. And again, Brad Mills, the Houston manager, will go to his bullpen. And he'll bring on the left hander Fernando Abad. Well, every pitcher that comes into the ball game for the Astros is pitching in a tough situation. 0 and 1 on the year, a 3.31 earned run average. This will be his 19th ball game. But he's only walked three batters and he struck out 11. Crowd chanting MVP as Joey Votto digs in to begin the bottom of the eighth. Breaking ball swung on and missed so many times this year. And it began very early in the year. The Reds coming from behind to win games. Tied for the second most in baseball with Atlanta behind only the Yankees. And they have the third most wins in their final at bat. 21 of them. And how sweet would number 22 be in your final at bat tonight? It would mean a National League Central Division title. Votto ahead to count two and one. Votto has now seen every pitch Abad has fastball, breaking ball, changeup. How about a little connection? Three balls and a strike. As you can tell, nearly every fan, better than 30,000 here tonight, standing. They can feel it. Anticipating, willing Votto. 
to hammer one of the seats and give the Reds a lead. An excuse me swing and it hit his back. This is a point in time whether you're in the bullpen you're on the bench you're sitting in the seats only one thing you're thinking about believe in the Reds believe it you got to believe it right here they all pitched to Joey Votto well he was full badly made him look very bad on that three two pitch and there's one out in the inning. Well, that was a change up there by a bot. Last pitch on earth I think anybody was looking for either a fastball in or a slider and he gets a change up. Well, a bot does his job. Sure does. So they will make a change. So be our skyline chili. Ball to the bullpen as he'll bring on a right hander now. Matt Lindstrom to face Scott Rowland. Matt Lindstrom. Right hander started out as the closer for this ball club. Now he is the setup man. This will be his 57th ball game, two and five on the year, a 4.53 earned run average, and he does have 23 saves. Roland looks at a fastball up and in for ball one. A 2 2 game. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning at Great American Ballpark. The Reds' magic number to clinch the National League Central stands at one game. Into right center field, it'll fall a hit for Scotty Roland. And a go ahead run here in the last of the eighth is a board for Johnny Gold. Fastball starts away, stays away, but the ball elevates ever so slightly as it gets to home plate. And Roland takes fine advantage of it. Back strain earlier put the right hander Lindstrom on the DL. He was on there until September 1st. Johnny Gomes is 0 for 3. He had a chance to do some major damage with the bases loaded and nobody out in the sixth inning. That's when the Reds tied the game. But Gomes fouled out to the first baseman. Brandon Phillips tied the game on an infield hit. But the Reds could do no more when Bruce hit a ball right on the button. But right at the second baseman to start a double play. One and one to Johnny. And part of the reason that Lindstrom was moved from closer to setup man is he had a difficult time throwing strikes on a regular basis. There'd be some nights he'd be lights out, some nights he couldn't find the zone. One and two to go. It's popped up in a short left center field. This will not be an easy play in the shortstop. Went out there to get it. And there are two away in the inning with Brandon Phillips coming up. I'll tell you what, Sanchez is the only one who had a chance on this ball with the speed or lack of that by Carlos Lee. It was no chance of getting near this. And if not for the athletic play by Sanchez, that ball drops in. All right now Brandon Phillips he's been hit by a pitch drawn a walk and had that infield hit over the third baseman's head in the hole it short to tie the game in the sixth inning. And a bunt up the third baseline and the inning is over. Wow. Can't remember the last time he tried that.
After every Reds game, Reds Live on Fox Sports Ohio breaks down the action with the most comprehensive highlights, exclusive interviews, and with the players and Dusty Baker before anybody else. That's right. Reds Live brought to you by Kings Honda in the Kings Auto Mall. Visit KingsHondaUSA.com. All righty, well, the big roar you hear is for Aroldis Chapman. Who comes on from the Reds bullpen? Of course, he got the loss Saturday on Friday night in San Diego. All 25 pitches that he threw were at least 100 miles per hour, with a high of 105 against Tony Gwynn. Three others at 104, and the 105 pitch to Gwynn is the fastest ever recorded using the pitch slash FX system. Well, in this, the history of baseball. And this will be his 13th time on the mound for the Reds. He has pitched in 10 and a third innings. He's given up eight hits. No home runs. He's only walked five. That was the big concern amongst everybody. And he struck out 14. Chris Johnson to lead off the Houston ninth in his 2 2 game. For the first time all night long, many people bringing their cameras to the game tonight, hoping to take pictures of a Reds Central Division clinching celebration on the field. Break him out here in the ninth inning on a roll to Chapman. That one fouled out of play, a ball and a strike on Johnson. He'll be followed by Brett Wallace and then Angel Sanchez. When you watch Chapman when he really has that extra pause on the mound before delivery to home plate that's the hardest pitches. Fastball up two balls and a strike. You could see him almost go right through the balance phase there when he picks up his knee and it's very slow that's when you're going to get some explosion at home plate. Foul out of play there. Two and two to Johnson. It's almost the more deliberate he is coming to home plate, the harder the ball is coming out of his hand. And I think a lot of that is allowing him to get his arm up into that good power position and throwing downhill. Struck him out. That was a curveball. Tonight's game on Fox Sports Ohio brought to you in part by PerformanceHondaStore.com. We'll put a smile on your face. Every customer, every vehicle, every day. And by Cincinnati Children's in the top ten for all selected pediatric specialties in U.S. News and World Report's 2010 Best Children's Hospitals. There is one out in the ninth inning. In front of better than 30,000 at Great American Ballpark, an unbelievable walk up crowd for this game today. And I'm talking about walk up crowd throughout the entire day. Almost 14,000 tickets were sold today alone. 14,000. Jason Michaels will be standing in against the left hander. And Michaels has turned around a fastball or two in his career. He bats for Wallace. Two and oh. If you're looking ahead of the bottom of the ninth inning, the Reds will have Jay Bruce, Ramon Hernandez, and then a pinch hitter for Aroldis Chapman. St. Louis trails four to two. Pirates batting in the top of the sixth inning. Well, he saw the curveball 2 2 
to Johnson. Do we see the curveball or slider 2 2 here to Michaels. Curveball. Even when the curveball does not break a whole lot downwards it still has that cross break from outside to inside and that's what locks up Michaels here. Two away in the inning and here's Sanchez. Fastball in the outside corner that hits triple digits. Oh, he's heating up. Crowd oohs and ahs. A delayed reaction is the radar gun out in left center field for all the world to see. One and one to Sanchez. Round ball to short a roll to Chapman with a one two three nine. Nice job. All right. Magic number at one. We're tied at two. Reds come to bat bottom half of the ninth inning in a two two game. It appears to be. Tim Burdak on the mound. I can't clarify that right now. Well, we know we have a left hander, Jay Bruce, coming up to start things here at the is, bottom of the ninth. It is Tim Burdak. Since July 31st, he's allowed one run in 25 appearances, and he went 22 consecutive appearances without allowing a run. So the left-hander has a limited has limited left-handed hitter since the start of 2007 to a one point to a 174 average. Jay Bruce digging in to start tonight. High drive, left center field, racing back to the wall, Bourgeois. The Reds are National League Central Division champions. Last time the Reds won the National League Central Division, Jay Bruce was seven years old. And here we are in 2010, and Bruce's home run on the first pitch in the bottom of the ninth sends his ballpark into pandemonium, and the entire region will celebrate a trip to the playoffs. How about that? And he does it against the guy who doesn't give up hits against left handers fifth best in Major League Baseball. Wow. Getting the clubhouse ready to roll. Rick Stowe Bernie Stowe their staff. Ready to break out the bubbly. For a long night of celebrating Cowboy. <laughs> Boy this Jay brings back Bruce, up. number 22 on the year. And the Reds clinch on this September the 28th, 2010, a Central Division Championship. 
brings back a whole lot of memories except it was next door where the parking lot is. <laughs> There's no better feeling than being first. for a manager Dusty Baker this now becomes the third time that he takes a team to the postseason for San Francisco 2003 Chicago and now 2010 Cincinnati and here's the way it ended. Fastball middle in see you later. Forget about the breaking ball. I'm looking heater. There have been so many celebrations for this Reds team like that one right there this year, but none like that one right there. Absolute pandemonium. You set it up earlier, Tom, talking about this club coming back, and yes, they did do that. Let's go downstairs to Jeff Pecoro standing by with Dusty Baker. Thanks a lot, Tom and Jeff. Uh, boy. Oh, no. Dusty, I'll tell you what. As you can tell, guys, this is one happy bunch of guys. And Dusty, it was only fitting that this team comes from behind and wins it tonight. Yeah, it was, and win it like that too. You know, because Jed, Jed, uh, you know, had, had, I know he felt bad about that double play. My boys are so happy. The whole the, the whole city's happy, and it's fitting that we did it here at home. I mean, that that was such a great thing. Uh, we just love everybody. Thank you for the support. Thanks for everything. The pitching tonight, fantastic. Again, you got great starting pitching. The relievers came in and shut them down, and it was only a matter of time. This team has been blessed all year, and you knew that it was going to happen sooner or later. What a crowd that came out tonight, too, Dusty. Yeah, and they're with us every pitch. I mean, I meant a big deal, big thing to us. And uh, I tell you, like I said, it's only fitting that Jay Bruce hit that home run, you know, to win the game. And uh, boy, I love this team. I love, I love Cincinnati. Thank you, Dusty. You've been there before. You've been to the World Series before. But for these young guys, what were you telling them leading up to this? Because there was so much pressure. All they needed was to win one game, and they got it. Well, I really didn't tell them anything. Just say, go out and play. Go out and play. Believe and uh, it happened, and it happened. How enjoyable is this for you? Well, it's very enjoyable for me. I tell you, this is what we came here for, and uh, it's a dream come true to all of us. And man, I'm happy. God damn, I'm happy right now. Thank you. Thanks, Dusty. The Dusty Baker for the 45th time. The Cincinnati Reds come from behind are victorious. Let's send it over to my partner, Jim Day. Big thank you very much. It is time to celebrate, Cincinnati Reds fans. September 28, 2010, your Reds are National League Central Division champions. We're not done. We're just getting started. We got the champagne, the celebration, the interviews. It's all coming up on the proud home of the Reds, Fox Sports Ohio. I think I'm going to cry. Come back after this with us. Time to celebrate.